I've not played for six years properly. Yeah. So like I feel like after the first two songs, I feel like I can't feel my hand properly. My wife said to me that her hat, she felt like she was had a rubber hand, somebody <laughs> else's hand trying to play bass. <laughs> so we got all these problems, but we just find them, you know, it's not, it's amusing or yeah. it's, it, it's what it is. And it gives it that, I always like things sounding like um, you've just started. I always like things like you've just started. If you imagine, like, uh, I used to be a big drinker, and the interesting thing for me about drinking was the first glass of beer, and then for the rest of the night, you're chasing the taste of the first glass, because the first glass is so nice, and you can never have the first glass again, apparently. So if you limit everything, and you can always be doing the first glass, because you don't go for the first glass the same evening, you don't you don't indulge yourself. So when we played yesterday, you know, we could be just starting as a group. If I could just explain the way my mind is well, we get asked to play quite often, we haven't played for the last six years, live, and um, Weekend Festival got in touch through my gallery and ah. asked if we would play, and I said no, and then they <laughs> said we could, um, we could give you double the amount of money, and I said <laughs> no. Okay. We don't play any. You are not really play anymore. And they, said, and they said, "Well, what's what do you need?" I said, "Well, you wouldn't be able to get us the equipment we want. We'll get." You. And they said, "Yes, we will." Yeah. So I said, "We use different equipment than other people." And they said, "That's not a problem." And I said, "Well, we'd have to take my daughter with us because we're not leaving her at home. So, and then we need someone to look after." I said, "That's not a problem." They said, "Well, we don't really want to stay in a hotel." And they said, "That's not a problem." <laughs> So in the end, they wore us down. There yeah. weren't there weren't any there wasn't anything left to say no to. So we were forced to play. <laughs> that yeah. meant that we had to remember how the songs go and do a do rehearsals, which I don't like doing either. And uh, in England, there was a as uh, a comedian called Stuart Lee, and he they're doing an all tomorrow's parties and. Stuart Lee asked if we'd play at that and we thought that was in November so he said oh yeah well we if we did two it might make sense but now it turns out that all tomorrow's party is in, eight, is in April it means you're gonna have to learn the songs again in the spring The reason I play music or the places I like to play music don't really exist anymore. And that's the downside of doing festivals as well, because I like small clubs. But small clubs don't... Most people now play to promote themselves, and the clubs don't want to pay. And then they have a large PA system with offstage mixing and much too big for the club. And we don't use that type of equipment. And then I don't like because I don't like fold back or off stage mixing and I don't like the security. I like back rooms of bars and the places we used to play when we were kids. The venue last night's yeah. fine for us. Okay. That's probably as, that's ideal large venue. We don't like going much bigger than that because we have to put some mics over yeah. our PA system to be able to hopefully mm -hmm. uh, get some sound going into the room. When, when, when the White Stripes came on the scene, people said to me um, that, that, that we're, we're, the White Stripes were similar to us and doing the same thing. And I said, absolutely not. The White Stripes want to get into, a, into the stadium as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And they want the gap between them and the audience. And they want the 15 yards or 20 yards. 
and we're always trying to close the gap. Right. We've never tried to be anything. And that to us is, when I say we don't want to be a famous group, I should say that like that's very low on our priority. We don't ever change what we do for what they want. Because we don't like giving any power away to the, uh, to the promoters or the world of the, the, the industry world of music. Yeah, and no, it means it's... that it makes it much smaller and a lot less um, commercial. But it's not because we're necessarily anti-commercial, it's because we want the thing to be what we do. We don't have any interest in doing what someone else wants. So I think that's the reason that people have liked us in the past, <clears throat> like, uh, like Kurt Cobain and Jack White used to like us, and these famous people and Beck, and these people come to us and say they like what we do. But I think it's because they know that we, did, we don't do what they do. <laughs> I think sometimes the music gets a bit hectic because of we don't know what's happening and, and we, <laughs> there's a certain amount of spontaneity, spontaneity and lack of control and, and knowledge yeah. on our part. Yeah. But the, um, the approach isn't hectic at all. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it's, very, uh, it's very intelligent and considered because it's, uh, um, we know exactly what our parameters are. We're not... We're not when we um, you see when I when I say they offer like we get asked to play a lot and people offer us more money and I say no or people ask us to go to Japan and play mm -hmm. and they will give us uh, bad conditions or conditions we don't want and I say to people no we're not going and other people and they say to me well other groups would do it for a lot less mm -hmm. and I say well it's best to have them play and we even used to do this in, we've always had this attitude, in mm. the head coats we had the same thing yeah. going. And I say, well have the other group play. And people said to me, oh that's a dangerous game to play with them because then they might not want you. And I said, yeah, but I'm not pretending. Mm -hmm. I don't mind yeah. staying at home. I'm completely happy not doing it. We don't try to be new or different or uh, relevant. What we do is we do what we do and we try to do it properly in the, in the parameter of what that is. So like as a painter I'm not trying to evolve new ways of making art because I think that would be immature or adolescent and stupid and I think that lots of ways things are taken forward in creativity of people look for originality and by looking for originality, they they often are just um, uh, uh, just creating something faddish, something uh, uh, with a novelty aspect, because it's not original. It's just a novelty, because the most important thing is not to be seen as new and original, but to be seen as real and authentic. And people lose sight of these things, it's like with the Rolling Stones and the British groups in the, in the early 60s. I mean, the Stones were sort of concerned about writing songs originally because they thought it would be disrespectful, and they also thought if something wasn't, didn't have 50 years of history behind it, it mm. wasn't the real thing. And you imagine that that's, that was the hippest, newest thing going, and they've got this complete concern with tradition. And they, they say, well, we shouldn't really write songs. It would be disrespectful if this hasn't got a history behind it. It's not the real thing. So what they wanted was the, you know, they, uh, they were keyed into the energy of a tradition, not trying to do something wacky and new. It's only when you hit the drug thing and the psychedelic period where mm -hmm. people are trying to add things in and be, uh, be wacky and of course you get some things that are okay out of that, but also it's the death really of R&B and rock and roll. It's the beginning of a, a descent into indulgence. You know, it's like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. I mean, it's an album that sounds like a, 
it's old women's music. They've done something which might be an amazing production and maybe a very interesting thing to try to do, but it's um, it's uh, it's for school children in a way, or for old ladies. And the tradition does not make it irrelevant, it makes it relevant. This is what all art should do. All art used to be plugged into a tradition. Yeah, to get and people, are, from, yeah. and people think that the tradition is the thing that makes it boring and dead, and, and that's why they abandon it. But the tradition, is <clears throat> all it does is it solves lots of the problems that you don't ever need to solve because it's already solved for you. You, know, you don't have to reinvent a, a wheel, yeah. you just use the wheel. Yeah. It years. works and it's so you yeah. use it yeah. and you use it to go where you want to go. I've always tried to stop playing music but it seems to come back up and if something comes back up then you just go with it. So, I mean I just stopped six years ago and didn't tell anyone. I didn't, we didn't make any announcement but as far as I was concerned I just wasn't going to do it. And then it's just come back that we are a bit which is handy because it means I don't have to come out of retirement because I never retire. Mm -hmm.